So hey fellow YouTubers, thought I'd give an update on where I'm at with uh, Little by Little. It's sunny Saturday here in Edmonton, Alberta. And I've been getting lots of work done. Well, not lots, but lots in my mind, I guess. Moving forward, any progress is progress as far as I'm concerned. So I've been focusing on the brakes and the hubs. Want to make sure that, uh, that everything's safe. So I'll give you an example of one of the ones that I redid here. So as you can see, Got new brake shoes on, new springs. Um, good trick that I learned off another fellow YouTuber is you put on the top shoe and then you put on these two springs, flip your bottom shoe under, that allows you to click this on without any special tools. You're holding a spring there, but you leave the little uh, the wheels off. And then you just use a simple crescent wrench and it allows you to obviously pry it pry the springs and then put the little wheels in and so it's a it's a nice trick to be able to swap the brake shoes out without any of the uh the fancy spring tools so appreciate the, the fellow that i learned that from on youtube so as i mentioned there was mouse nests in three out of the four wheels they like to set up shop they crawl through the back pan there and then set up shop right on the uh on the bottom shoe and make their little nest so hopefully with the cats I have in the neighborhood, we're not going to have that problem again. Uh, ideally, I'd like to get my truck inside a shop eventually. But uh, for now, anyway, I took the hubs off. Uh, incredible amount of grease because the seal had uh, blown through here. So I had to clean them all up. Two actually were good seals and then two, two had the Scott seal with the, uh, the wear ring. And then two were uh, uh, a different style that, uh, that leaked. But anyway, I got the, got the hubs off, cleaned them out, uh, checked the bearings and races. They were all in pretty good shape, all except one. So I replaced the bearing and race on that. Uh, a fellow I was talking to at Peterbilt was saying that a trick that he uses to set this nut is to, while you're spinning the hub, tighten the inner nut as much as you can uh, while you're spinning the hub and then back it off a quarter turn. Put on your, uh, your ring with the, the lock tabs and then you tighten this outer nut as tight as you can get it. So this, I had to get a special uh, four and a half inch socket for that. So that's the uh, the procedure I used. Seems nice and tight, tolerance is right. Um, and then yeah, put the axle back in and a uh, new gasket. The previous owner had been using uh, kind of a gasket maker. Uh, so I just purchased new gaskets and we'll seal that up. And then I got new drums from Fort Gary. These are 3141s for this old Pete 359. Uh, they were about 200 bucks each, so, but they're all nice and new. And that's basically it. Oh yeah, I put on new slack adjusters. So I went back with uh, with manual slacks because I'm not driving it all that much. I don't like it up here to, to adjust the brakes from time to time. So one thing I noticed, there was a lot of tolerance with the in and out, so I had to put in some new shims to um, get it within spec. Um, so now all that needs to happen is mount the, the brake pots and we'll be good to go on the back end. I cut a lot of the lines when I took the old pots off. Anyway, a lot of the lines are pretty rotten, so I'll be replacing those. Anyway, uh, one challenge I had was I wasn't able to spin off the nuts, the end of the axle, without the brakes applied. So. I just used a ratchet strap, which pushed the slack adjuster the right way to uh, to push the brakes out against the drum, locking the drum and allowing me to take the nuts off and then torque them up properly. So I thought that was pretty slick. I was really surprised the manual slack adjusters were extremely economical. They were actually only $24 each, I guess, because nobody buys manual slacks anymore. They're all, uh, they're all automatic. So that's basically it on the back end the uh so it's been done all the way around all four um i did want to show the spicer 1241c the four speed auxiliary box i did actually um, take the cover plate off i wanted to do an inspection and uh see how it looked inside i'll actually see if i can get this set up on a, on a stand so you guys can see it as well there we go. Try that. So I don't knock that over. So 
have looking in there, not a very complicated transmission by any means. So there's your two shift forks. Oops. Down like that. Grab the camera again. So yeah, initial uh, look there. I mean, the oil needs to be swapped out, but I don't see any severe wear or chipping of the gears. A little bit of rust, I don't know if you guys can see it on these teeth, but these teeth haven't turned in 10 years. But overall, I'm quite impressed. I don't think this is going to need a rebuild after all. Again, a little greasy, a little dirty, you can tell some water got in there. But uh, overall, pretty good shape, so I'm happy, happy to see that. And that's basically it. I haven't done much else. Um, there was a in Ontario that got in touch with me, Randy, and uh, building an old 359. He's actually converting the short hood to a long hood. Uh, basically just riveted panels, got the longer uh, panels and then extended the hood out. And another fellow I was talking to, Saskatchewan, does the same thing. And they just extend the frame rails on the front and then move this all forward. But I don't know if I'm going to go through that much trouble. I don't mind the short hood, especially since I'm going to be likely pulling a camper. In the future, I don't need the truck any longer than it already is. But yeah, that's that's pretty much the update. I'm going to try and take the seats out. Uh, I did a lot of degreasing. Got the old car washer out and uh, started spraying grease on the motor and the tranny, getting all that cleaned up. I still have to sandblast, paint and prime this portion of the frame. But uh, it's lovely not having the, the sleeper on here. Uh, good, easy access. So I'll clean that up and, and finish painting the back end. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, have to say, this has been a, a very fun project. I'm learning lots. I'm by no means a professional mechanic. I just kind of learn by looking through manuals, watching videos on YouTube, and asking folks you know, how things are done. Um, but it has been a lot of fun. A little more money than I was expecting, but the end product, when she's all finished up, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a real treat. So we'll just keep uh, grinding away on it. Thank you so much for all the positive comments. You know, a lot of a lot of videos on YouTube and get a lot of haters, but I have to say that uh, I'm just so pleased that everyone's given such positive feedback. It really helps keep me going on this project. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope to give another update soon.